hi, this is Bonnie with TLC Inspirations, and today we're going to you know, take a look at making some crazy quilt squares, and I'm going to do two different methods. This one's the piecing method, and I've got several different shapes of fabrics cut. Um, you can cut them ahead of time like I did, or you can cut them as you go. But the main concept is you're going to want a fabric to start with in the center, and then you just start matching up pieces, uh, raw edges together. Um, you want to try to find the similar um, raw edge so that they match up. Um, and then you're going to sew them right sides together along that raw edge. So these two pieces match up pretty good, so I'm going to start with these two. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance and sew them together. Be sure to do your um, couple back stitches to secure your stitching. And then go ahead and sew them together. And this is how you start a piecing of uh, crazy quilting. Okay, so now we're at the end of those two pieces, and again, do your back stitches to secure your stitching. You cut your threads, and then um, I would suggest that you iron your two squares. Um, I think the finished product is much nicer if you iron as you go. You also know you have a little tail sticking out here. You can trim that off now or trim it off later. I'm just going to trim it off now and give me a fairly straight edge to work with. And now I'm going to look for my next piece of fabric to sew on that will match up with one of these edges. And I'm going to work outwards to um, so that I can achieve an 8x8 eight eight square, uh, leaving um, room for a seam allowance when I put the quilt together. My actual quilt squares will be, you know, seven by seven once they're all sewn together. But these, um, I want to be able to cut an eight by eight, eight by eight inch square out of these uh, quilt pieces. So I'm continuing to work outward here so that I can get an eight inch square out of my crazy quilt pieces. Sometimes you may have to sew two pieces together. Um, like I said, um, crazy quilting is a little bit crazy and um, the imperfect is um, not something that you'll achieve if you're crazy quilting. So um, I've just about got this to where I can get my 8 inch uh, square out of it. And so once I get to that point, then I trim up all my sides and square it off. That's the little piece that um, you, when you have to overlap like that, you're going to want to make sure you fold over the edge and then top stitch it. Okay, so I've got my square, my first square pretty well put together here. And now I want to add some embellishments on this square, and I want to do it... Uh, simply and um, quickly. So on this case I'm using my machine to do some decorative stitching and some words and um, that makes a quick and easy way to add embellishments to a square. Now the second method is foundation method and for that we're going to want a piece of foundation fabric. So I've cut an 8 by 8 square of um, muslin or sheeting and again I have my crazy quilt pieces and I've kind of selected this piece to start in the center a little bit of an angle and I've got a second piece that matches up the edges so I've got my first two pieces except this time uh, when I sew them together I'm going to sew them onto the foundation fabric 
and these would be my first two pieces that would be on my foundation fabric. And don't worry if your pieces um, go over the edge of your foundation fabric because you can trim those off in the end so you can actually use larger pieces and then just trim them off. So I'm going to start with these two pieces and take them over to um, my machine and sew them together. I can get kind of an idea of where I'm going with my square from some of my pre-cut pieces. And this gives me a general idea of what I have to work with here. It's just like working on a big jigsaw puzzle and trying to fit the pieces all together. So you just keep on trying them in different areas until you get a look that you like, until they fit nicely together. Uh, Color-wise, design-wise, whatever you have in mind, that's the creative process. You don't want to do exactly what somebody else does. You want to add your own creativity. So again, those edges will be trimmed off. So let's get these pieces sewn on and see what we end up with. Okay, so again, quarter-inch seam with it on the foundation fabric. Doing my lock-in stitches. Okay, so there's the first two pieces sewn together. I'm going to turn them right side up and I'm going to take it to my iron and press it. And I've sewn other pieces on and pressed them as well. So now I'm going to keep on going and keep on adding until my foundation fabric is completely covered. Reminding you again that when they hang over the edge, they'll be trimmed off. So just keep on working away until your foundation fabric is covered. Now if you get a... Um, edges that don't match exactly like this. You don't really have to worry about it too much because you can just trim those little pieces off um, after you've sewn your your little fabric piece on. So if you don't want the added bulk that it gives underneath there, you can, you can just trim those off or when you press it, um, it's probably not going to really add that much bulk. So it's up to you. Yeah, I got a nice little triangle here that will fill up my corner, so I'm going to use that right here. And so now you can see my piece before it's trimmed. It's attached to my foundation square. And there you can see where it overlaps. And I'm going to turn it upside down to trim all that excess off. Okay. See, I already did some machine stitching on some of this, but um, to get our quilt square now, I've turned it upside down and I've lined up my uh, quilting ruler with the edge of the foundation fabric. And I'm just going to trim this excess fabric off with my rotary cutter. So that I'll have a nice 8 by 8 inch square to work with for my quilt. Okay, so now I've got my uh, hand embroidery hoop and decided I wanted to add some hand embroidery to this square. So I've done the fern stitch and uh, by hand and then also this is the machine stitch, um, kind of a variation of the fern stitch except by machine. So I've got both machine and hand embroidery on this square. And I like the hand embroidery because it's bolder. Um, and I just like the looks of it a lot better. So that gives you kind of a comparison of the two. Um, the one by the machine is just a little finer and delicate looking. So it depends on what you're looking for. Um, on this quilt square, um, not only did I do the fern stitch, which you can um, refer back to uh, another video that I've 
on on our play on TLC Inspirations playlist on the fern stitch. Um, I actually have fern stitch and the stem stitch, straight stitch, um, lazy daisy, coil stitch. So if you want to refer to our uh, hand embroidery playlist, you'll be able to find um, all the stitches that I worked with on this square. Right now, what you're looking at, I'm doing the fern stitch, which you start out with a straight stitch, and then you come up on the left side and go down at the bottom of the stitch, and then come up on the right side and go down at the bottom of the straight stitch again. Okay, so let's go through that again. I just completed the first one. Okay. So now I'm going to come up at the base of that last stitch. Now I'm sorry that the camera's a little blurry, but you you know if you watch my other video, you'll be able to get a better view. And then we're going to do a straight stitch down. And then about halfway up on the left side, I'm going to come up and go back down at the base of the straight stitch. And then come back up halfway up on the right side. And then back down at the base of the straight stitch again. And you just keep on repeating that process along the seam. And that's the fern stitch. And this is what it looks like. So now you can add whatever stitches you want to wherever you want. I put a little bit of stem stitching on one side of that one square. I did a lazy daisy flower on that one. And I'm going to, there's the stem stitch along the edge there. And then I'm going to add some French knots on here. Then you can see how much texture, <coughs> excuse me, it adds an interest to the crazy quilt. Okay, so now um, on this piece of fabric, it's got some little, I don't know, I guess you would call them little flower buds or something. And so I'm going to enhance those by doing French knots. And so to do a French knot, you're going to come up and then you're going to wrap the thread around your needle four or five times. and then you're going to put the needle back in the same area and hang on to your thread while you pull your needle through and it will create a nice little knot it almost looks like a bead and again you can refer to your TLC Inspirations YouTube channel playlist to see how to do that you can see how nice it looks I just love the French knots they're so cute I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you will experiment and use your own creativity um, and give this a try. Thank you for watching.